Mr. Ricardo is a 68-year-old recreational sailor who's come into clinic with pain in his right shoulder. This has come on over the course of a few weeks and is bad even at night. He's also noticed some weakness in the same shoulder. My name's Connor, and in the next six minutes, we're going to cover the shoulder joint and rotator cuff. The three bones that form the shoulder joint are the triangular scapula, or shoulder blade, the clavicle, or collarbone, and the humerus, which is the bone in your upper arm. These three bones articulate with one another to provide the wide range of movement we see in the shoulder. The clavicle sits anterior to the ribcage, connecting to the manubrium of the sternum, and the scapula sits posterior to the ribcage. Now, these bones have a number of key landmarks that we need to be familiar with if we're going to understand the shoulder joint. On the humerus, we have the greater and lesser tubercles, and between them we have a groove, known simply as the intertubercular groove. A tubercle is a protrusion in a bone that is associated with the attachment of a structure. The word comes from tuber, which means lump. This anterior view of the scapula is also known as the costal view, as it's the side that's in contact with the ribs. The most obvious feature on this side is the large concave subscapular fossa. Then we have the shallow glenoid cavity, which articulates with the humerus at the glenohumeral or shoulder joint. And above and below this, we have the supraglenoid and infraglenoid tubercles, but we'll discuss these more in a later session. Finally, we have two very important protrusions known as the coracoid process and the acromion. The acromion articulates with the clavicle. The word acromion comes from the Greek roots akros and omos, meaning highest and shoulder, as it is the highest point of the shoulder. And coracoid means raven-like, because it kind of looks like a raven's beak. From the posterior view, we have a prominent spine, which divides the scapula into two parts. The infraspinous fossa below the spine, and the supraspinous fossa above it. Easy. Now, you must be thinking that the glenoid cavity is rather small to hold the humerus in place, and you'd be right. The small surface allows a wide range of movement, but it needs some help to stop your arm falling off. The first bit of help comes from a fibrocartilaginous ring known as the glenoid labrum. This helps to deepen the shoulder joint. But, of course, this still won't cut it. To properly hold the shoulder in place, we need eight ligaments and four muscles. Let's cover those now. The first of our ligaments is the simple acromioclavicular ligament, which holds the acromion connected to the clavicle. Next, we have the coracoclavicular ligaments, joining the coracoid process to the clavicle, and the coracoacromial ligament between the coracoid process and acromion. This doesn't actually do much in terms of holding structures together, Instead, it sits above the head of the humerus to stop it dislocating superiorly. Connecting the glenoid cavity to the humerus and reinforcing the joint capsule, we have the superior, middle and inferior glenohumeral ligaments. And finally, to attach the coracoid process to the humerus, we have the coracohumeral ligament. Now, if you can remember the names of these structures, then you can work out their attachments very easily. To help you remember their names, recite the mantra, four C's, three G's and an A. That way you've got all the shoulder ligaments covered. Finally, let's learn our muscles. There are actually five muscles in this region, but only four of them form a structure known as the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff mainly acts, along with the glenoid labrum and the ligaments, to hold the humerus into the glenohumeral joint and prevent dislocation. Our first muscle comes from the supraspinous fossa, and thus is simply named supraspinatus. It attaches to the greater tubercle of the humerus to abduct it the first 15 degrees. And again, easily, from the infraspinous fossa, we have the infraspinatus. This also attaches to the greater tubercle and acts to rotate the arm externally. Both of these muscles are innervated by the suprascapular nerve. Next we have teres minor, which gets its name teres from the Latin word for round. It also attaches to the greater tubercle to externally rotate the arm. It is supplied by the axillary nerve, which actually passes posteriorly just below it. Lastly, we have teres major, which is not part of the rotator cuff. This attaches to the intertubercular groove to extend, adduct, and internally rotate the arm. It is innervated by the lower subscapular nerve. And to finish off, we'll look from the anterior or costal view. 
From here we can firstly see supraspinatus, and you'll notice this small synovial sac sitting between supraspinatus and the acromion. This is known as the subacromial bursa and is essential in allowing the supraspinatus muscle to glide through this small space and reduce friction. We also, of course, have teres major poking through. And our last muscle comes from the subscapular fossa. No prizes for guessing its name. The subscapularis muscle attaches to the lesser tubercle of the humerus to internally rotate the arm. Its big belly means it is innervated by both the upper and lower subscapular nerves. And if you're interested, this is how the brachial plexus fits into the picture. Right, let's finish off by returning to Mr. Arcada. He was suffering from pain and weakness in his shoulder. Specifically, the pain was worse when he abducted his shoulder between 60 and 120 degrees. This is a classic finding and is typical of a condition known as supraspinatus tendonitis, or painful arc syndrome. It occurs due to inflammation of the supraspinatus tendon as it passes under the acromion. It tends to occur due to overuse, for example in Mr. Ocada's sailing. The diagnosis is usually clinical and the treatment typically involves rest, physiotherapy and painkillers. There we go, that's all of the shoulder joint and rotator cuff in 6 minutes. If you learned something, remember to subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.